when you study physics, and in particular particle physics, and look at the table of elementary particles, you'll see photons listed as an elementary particle. What they don't tell you is that physicists, or a physicist back in the 1930s, figured out that photons are composite particles and should not be considered to be elementary. To understand how and why photons are composite, composite particles, you can start with understanding that photons are polarizable, they can be linear polarized, they can be circularly polarized. Photons also produce electric field and protons produce a magnetic field. In order for linear polarization to occur, you have to have an electric charge dipole. First, polarization requires positive and negative charges. And so you have to start with electric charges in order for any of those properties to happen. And that's where modern physicists get into trouble. Under quantum wave theory, you have the wavy guys who think everything's made of waves and there's no physical medium for the waves and there's no physical description for what a particle is. But if you have an electric charge, you must have a particle because the charge, as far as we can tell, originates from a point-like region of space and it polarizes the quantum field medium around it. And so the charge-like behavior of the photon requires that it contain charges and not just be a wave phenomenon. And in particular, with a linear polarization, you have dipoles that are rotating in a plane. And that plane of rotation is what gives us the linear polarization. But there's circular polarization where the dipoles must be rotating. So we know that we have rotating dipoles within a photon in order for, or at least a series of rotating dipoles, just one at a time at a minimum, uh, in order to explain circular polarization. And then when we consider the electric field, we have, a, once again, a rotating dipole at a minimum in order to polarize in a way that you get a wave function. So you have to have a dipole first rotating one way, then rotating the other way, and then rotating the other way again in order to give you that polarization. And then generating a magnetic field requires a moving dipole. And to generate a rotating magnetic field requires a rotating dipole. So when a dipole rotates, it forms a magnetic field. And you can curl your, your finger in the in the direction of rotation, um, say I had a, a dipole rotating this way, I could curl my fingers this way and say the North Pole points up. Sorry about that. So we can determine that there's a magnetic field coming from a rotating dipole that's in the center of a photon. Now I wasn't the first to figure this out. Louis de Broglie figured it out in the 1930s and wrote about it or at least he's the first to write about it that I'm aware of. It's possible other brilliant scientists of the day also recognize this. And what he realized initially was that um, the Schrodinger equation was non-relativistic, while the Dirac equation was. So he said, well, I have to describe photons using the Dirac equation because they're moving at the speed of light. And then he realized that using the Dirac equation meant that he had to have two particles because um, it couldn't just be a single fermion. So he came up with the electron-positron model of a photon. And he realized with the electron-positron model of a photon that that accounted for the polarization and the generation of electric and magnetic field. 
So he was able to get a much more complete description of the photon. The problem was is electrons and positrons have mass and he couldn't reconcile that. And this was before the physicists had recognized you can have electron-positron pairs, quantum electron-positron pairs that are massless. Um, so what Du Bois did next is he tried a different fermion on neutrinos. But his neutrino theory of light, which oddly is taught in some classes while the electron-positron model is not, even though the electron-positron model is correct, in a, although not precisely the way he taught it. Um, but the neutrino model was, is what we hear about, and that's similar, but can be easily uh, shown to be wrong. Um, it, number one, it doesn't have charges. <laughs> so, but we do have this model, and it's been here over 80 years now. Um, and there shouldn't be any reason that people are teaching the photon as being a elementary particle. Um, and as I said, now we do know that there are quantum fluctuations, electron, quantum electron positron pairs that are massless, their energy, frequency, and wavelength happens to match that of a photon. So we can think of a photon as being a series of quantum electron positron pairs. Each one rotates 180 degrees to, during its life and gets replaced by another one and they counter-rotate so that the photon has zero angular momentum. Um, we could also imagine that there's a type with angular momentum, and that would end up looking exactly like a form of neutrino. But that's another video. So what we have then, when we're looking at a photon, in order to get the polarization and electric and magnetic field development correct is this series of counter-rotating quantum fluctuations. And then the rotating quantum fluctuations cause other quantum fluctuations in the quantum field to rotate. Because they get polarized and they get magnetized and, and generate electric and magnetic fields. And those fields propagate through space and because of the way they propagate through space, they form waves. So the waves around the photon are made of quantum field and quantum fluctuations. So we have uh, a fairly simple composite model where we have a series of quantum fluctuations in the middle and the quantum field forming the field around it. So the waves are not a property of the photon their medium is the quantum field, and so the waves should be looked at differently in terms of how they propagate. And a photon really has no particle wave duality. It has these waves that are interacting with the point charge charges in the middle. Um, and there are some interesting ways that that happens, such in order to explain the, the dual slit experiment properly, as an example. Um, but that experiment still works within the scope of this model. And as I've said at the beginning, you have to have point charges in order to have polarization and electric and magnetic fields being developed. So that means that because an electron or a photon is a composite particle, the photon is not elementary. It's not an elementary particle. And shouldn't be in the chart as an elementary particle. And we have to rethink a lot of other things that were talked about photons. And I'll do other videos on some other parts of that. Um, it's also important to note that when electron and positron annihilate, and they have excess energy, so they can't just annihilate completely, that starts a photon. So we can think of the formation of photons in terms of electrons and positrons annihilating. And then we can think of the absorption in terms of electrons and positrons annihilating. 
Now similar, since there's proton any proton pairs as well, within a nucleus we can have proton any proton annihilation that forms more likely a higher energy gamma type proton. So there's the possibility of a, a second class of photon that's not even discussed by standard model theorists. Um, that's initiated by proton antiproton interaction. And more likely those are going to be higher energy gamma photons for the most part. The photons formed in electromagnetic interactions in molecules with involving the electrons are all going to be the lower energy electron positron type uh, photon that I described here. So bottom line is the physics, the real physics tells us that photons are not an elementary particle, that they're a composite. And this quantum particle pair model is beginning with the work of De Broglie um, gives us a workable model to explain how photons really are. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to support my channel, uh, you can purchase one of my books or contribute on Patreon. I appreciate it. I describe the photon issues in my book, The Zero Point Universe. And then again, I go through it in the 100 Greatest Lies in Physics, because some involve that. And then again, in particle theory, in uh, my book, the goodbye quarks the ionium theory um, because it's understanding the photon is a good first under step to understanding any comprehensive particle theory so once again thanks for watching bye